So let's take a look with Lauren Rossborough now, who's a senior currency strategist with Westpac. Thanks so much for coming in to speak to us. So what are the risks to fiscal tightening in the current economic environment? Are European countries risking a double-dip recession? I think most European countries are well aware that they can't tighten too soon and by too much. Now that's not to the extent of, say, uh, Greece, for example, Portugal and Spain, because the concern there is more about contagion and the fact that they weren't on top of their deficits in the first place. However, overall, Germany and France, I mean, Germany had a tightening recently, but to all extents and purposes, it wasn't significant. In the UK, for example, Osborne this week, a lot of the, uh, I guess, the plans coming in and the expenses that they're going to be reducing all pushes further out. This is going to have a benefit for growth in the near term um, mm. and will assist growth in the long term as well. Now, as we gear up for the G20, we've seen something of a split, two camps. You've got the US on the one hand saying that it's simply too soon to start removing stimulus measures. They're calling for uh, you know, growth to be the focus rather than cutting debt. Is the US justified in being concerned about stimulus measures being removed too quickly? There is two philosophies, I guess. You can grow your way out of a recession and out of high debt levels, or you can cut your debt, cut your spending. And, uh, and as, as we know, Europe, um, and in particular Germany, and the US sit in different camps. What we are seeing, I guess, in the US itself is a, uh, a less, lessening of momentum going forward already. And the FOMC made that clear. What they're concerned about, despite the fact that it looks like the economy is picking up, um, it's not overly strong, and there's still a lot of slack left in the economy. So how then do you cut your debt, bring government debt down without endangering economic recovery, economic growth? A lot of studies have, um, well, there's, there's no one solution, let's put it that way. Mm. Uh, I think what the UK government has done, the coalition, is very good in that they've looked at cutting spending as the significant proportion of reducing their debt levels. Um, they've also looked at increasing taxes, but to a lesser extent, because that has a one-on-one -on -one impact on consumer growth and therefore um, uh, on growth overall in the economy. Uh, they've also reduced corporate tax, mm. uh, and that's one thing that may well come up on the G20 is the bank levy. Now, Osborne did say that, uh, that Germany and France would be making a statement about something similar. And I think the one surprise the market might have is on that front to come this weekend. Oh, you think they, they will reach an agreement on that? Well, whether it's a global agreement or whether there's more talk about the potential for it and move forward on it, uh, I certainly think that'll be the case. I can if I can just bri briefly ask you about the dollar, because uh, we've seen it weakening against most of its major currency counterparts, hitting a six week low against the pound. Are we seeing mounting concerns about the strength of economic recovery in the US now? That is certainly the case. The numbers that we have seen have been, as I said, lessening of momentum. Uh, when It's not to say Westpac doesn't believe that we're going to see a double dip. We've got GDP coming out um, shortly and it's going to be about 3% or so of the market, which is still relatively robust. Mm. But relative to the growth that we saw last year, we're nowhere near that extent of momentum. The question is whether the market views this as being a um, uh, a double dip or the start of the double dip and consequently by how much will the dollar continue to sell off. Our view is it's only a short term view, uh, short term move, not a medium or a long term one. Okay, Lauren Rossborough, thank you so much for speaking to us. We appreciate it.